What's poppin' everybody? So this is kind of a controversial post that popped up on the forums, and I want to talk about what it is. It kind of has to do with, um, I guess, the barrier to entry to get into endgame PvE, which a lot of people are going to, you know, describe as different things, whether that's veteran dungeons, you know, trifecta dungeons, trifecta trials, normal trials, whatever. You know, everyone has kind of their own endgame. But let's just read this post. You'll get what I'm saying in a second. All right, recently I've created an alt character that I'm leveling. In case you don't know the most efficient way to level the Undaunted skill on before hitting CP, it's to do the weekly trial quests, since you can start joining trial groups at level 10. Not to mention you get a bunch of transmutes, slaughter stones, which is the trait stone for the bloodthirsty trait for jewelry, and possibly style pages. What I found, however, is that for all the uh, talk of the ESO community being this inclusive place that is more than willing to help new players, it sure isn't willing to let them participate in any harder content, if you can even call it normal Ethereum Archive hard. This is one of the very first trials that you can get into. It was one of the OG Craglorn trials. It's probably arguably the easiest trial in the game. Almost every single trial group I joined, the leader winds up kicking me. Keep in mind, these are normal trials to try to do, and I'm queuing up as a damage dealer, so not a very significant role. Even if I was only providing like 4K DPS, okay, this is where it starts getting a little funny. 4K DPS. You could quite literally just light attack and do more than 4K DPS, right? But you'll see why this person's saying this. It wouldn't change anything as there are no DPS checks in normal trials. Most of the time, I have to explain myself. And even after linking several hard mode clears, I still get kicked. I honestly can't imagine how hard it must be for actual new players to start doing trials when this is what I have to deal with. Never mind how often I have to try and defend myself from the your DPS is too low for this bolded it, normal base game trial that has no DPS checks crowd, something that a new player probably won't have the confidence to do. Speaking of new players, how do these people who kick low levels think a new player that has just gathered the courage to apply for a trial will feel? Are they going to try again with a different group, or will they just go, well, I tried, I got told to F off, clearly rating isn't for me. It's no secret that ESO has a problem with player retention, which is especially felt in the in-game community, and this sort of behavior really isn't helping them. I sometimes wonder how much easier it would be to find support roles if low-level trials were encouraged instead of how it is right now. The group finder for trials opens up at level 10, for God's sake. Okay, so now... You can start seeing the crowd. Okay, so what this guy is doing is he is complaining that he is getting kicked from trials groups, normal trial group hugs, which is pretty hard to do, to get absolutely kicked from a normal trials group. If you're like a decent person and you're not like being rude and stuff and you're what role you state you are, you don't really get kicked. The problem is, is this guy is joining in the group finder. He's joining normal trials at level 10, right? And his whole thought process is, well, I want to grind up the undaunted skill line, so I want to join these pug trials. Nobody, I'm just going to put this bluntly, right? It's not about DPS chips. Everybody has X amount of time in the day to do so. Let's say I need to run three cloud rest trials today because I'm farming out reliquent. I only have time for three quick runs, right? I don't want a level 10 in the group because I want to do this efficiently. It's not about it being a DPS check. It's not about that, right? Uh, it's just a level 10 is a dead body, basically. It's not going to allow you to do anything. Nobody's kicking new players. Nobody's kicking, you know, CP 10, CP 30. I it's honestly very evident that that's a new player, right? And I've never heard of any new player just outright getting kicked unless they're a DPS and they're accidentally queuing up as a tank and they go in there with no taunt and they just don't know what they're doing and they're told to do stuff and then they don't. You know, like extenuating circumstances like that. I honestly this needs to be a reality check. This guy's getting flanked on the force and it's kind of fun. Nobody wants to carry huts. It's just not really a thing. Like, I don't go into a pug saying, I can't wait to carry a bunch of level 10s through this pug. Like, it, is, it doesn't make sense. Now, if you're wanting to do an undaunted, you know, grind session with your guild or something, that's totally different. But you can't be expecting pugs to want to carry you through stuff. It doesn't, like, the world doesn't work that way. 
You don't just get hand me outs for stuff. Whenever a person like me, for instance, let's say I'm tanking, I can solo tank all the normal trials. It's fine. Right. So I'll look for two healers. Typically, sometimes one healer, if they're, if they're fine with that, so I can heal myself in a normal trial. Um, and then I'll look for nine to 10 damage deals, right? And that's because that's going to be efficient. It's going to get it done quickly. Whatever. Everyone's doing their part. I'm, I'm a tank or a healer, whatever. The healer is a healer. And then we've got 10 damage deals. What I don't want to do is bring a level 10 in there that I'm not friends, a random level 10. Just because something opens up doesn't mean that other people are going to have fun with you playing. If you, let's say, are just for the first time, and there are people that do this, that don't run dungeons, barely ever. And one of the first things they do is they hop into a veteran DLC dungeon at CP300. They have no idea what the mechanics are. They have no rotation. And it's a miserable experience, right? Imagine going through veteran dread seller with a CP300 that just light attacks the whole time. You're going to have a bad time. And those, and it's not a rudeness thing, right? Especially if you're giving advice and that person's not wanting to hear it. It's a waste of time for the other three people in the group. Your time is not more valuable than anyone else's. Just like my time isn't more valuable than anyone else's. When I join a pug, I honestly, the process in my mind is I'm either going to help teach people new mechanics, which is fine. So I enjoy doing that, but I'm going to play my role to the best of my ability. I'm not going to ask for hand outs. I'm not going to join groups and do 4k DPS. I honestly, I honestly like to get a clear every single time and have people be happy with me. It's just not how the world works. Right? So let's read this last paragraph. I honestly, I honestly, the pedantic focus on level doesn't end once you hit CP, however. Oh no. Want to do veteran AA? Better hope you're at least CP 2000 with fully gold to gear. Otherwise, you're not stepping foot in vet trials cheap. That's not true at all. I was recently in a vet Hellraw Citadel pug and had to argue with the raid lead and four other people about a CP 438 player that wanted to join. Want to know what happened to the last boss? Most of the people that are CP2000 that were in the group died to Shahai Storm because they didn't know how to split up. Meanwhile, the CP438 didn't die once. Again, it's not about CP at all, right? I think some people will discriminate against level, and that is their right to do so if they're starting the group. If somebody is starting a group for an instance, they need, in this case especially, they need to not just have like an open invitation they need to set the cp that they want like if you want cp 1000 or above you need to set that in the group fund. i mean just plain and simple right if that's going to be a problem to those four people that's their own fault they had an open invitation that's kind of crappy to have a cp 438 player come in and flame them for that i totally agree with that instance i this honestly instance is what i would call just borderline like maybe a little toxic especially if they don't like this guy could be cp2000 on playstation and be a very good player like you just have no idea so if you're if you're in a sort of group and you want them to be a certain performance level that needs to be in the application to join the group here what the original poster is saying about there being a high barrier to entry because he's getting kicked out of the group as a level 10 trying to join hugs that's his own problem that's that's just something totally different I wrote, I've run tons of trials with people under level 50, but there were people in our guild. They were people that I knew. If I'm pugging, I don't even know this person. Like, we're not going to do that. That's not the point of a pug. This guy needs to join a guild and he needs to get in with people that are going to run with him and know that he's bringing a low level character for that purpose, right? If I have so much time in the day and I want to run a trial real quick, you know, and this guy just wants to grind up and dance it. That's also on me to make sure that the minimum requirement set is CP 160. I, I don't, whenever I do a plug, I always set it to CP 160. Always. That's all you need. Right. Because in my opinion, I honestly they can get the gear. They can have a good time. It's not about, that. but CP 10 is, is not, or not CP 10. Level 10 is nothing. I mean, that's literally not, that is the bare freaking minimum. I mean, you're not even able to bar swap. Now, obviously you could say, well, open soul people don't bar swap. That's not the point. I mean, you just, you don't have any passives. You don't have any abilities. You have nothing at level 10. I honestly, so, I just don't agree with this sense. Right. Let's read the first few comments and then we'll get out of here. And then I want to hear what y'all think. 
I honestly, this is completely understandable as most people use normal trials to grind gear. They want to do it as quickly as possible. They're not interested in carrying players who are grinding undaunted. Exactly. Exactly. And in my opinion, the best way to grind undaunted, for those of you that are wondering, is to go into each dungeon for the first time on normal. I honestly, do the dungeon, do the dungeon quest, get your skill point, which helps with your leveling. You get XP, you're leveling your character, you're getting skill points, and you're leveling at gods. Joining trials at level 10 is not the move. Do not try to do this with putts. If your guild is having a guild run where they're carrying low-level characters and that's something that's scheduled or something that you guys have worked out, that's totally different. Do not join trials, of trials, as somebody under level 50. It's just not a good look. You're going to get kicked. And I don't want you guys to have like a bad interaction, but... That's just what pugs are for. Pugs are for grinding gear. People don't want to carry a dead body through the entire thing. So that's what a level 10 is. Because you're not going to contribute, so it's basically like you're not there, right? It's gimping the whole group. It's not because you can't complete it with a level 10. You absolutely could. You could have five level 10s in there and complete it. It's just going to take a lot longer than necessary. That's the whole thing. Why would you want something to take longer when you don't even know this person that's level 10? Joining it. Like, it just, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. This is not a dungeon. You know, where, where this is something that happens all the time. Um, it's a little bit different, right? Um, even among level 50 characters, DPS can be very low in normal trial points. You may have the option of playing trial at level 10, but that doesn't exclude other players for having different requirements and expectations. It's their prerogatives. If you disagree, you're free to run your ungroups with requirements you think are appropriate. Couldn't agree more. I honestly you mean pubs in this example for under 50 characters. Social and training guilds often take baby characters on normal trials. Exactly. Join a guild that does this, and that's the whole purpose of those runs. You joining a pub group under level 50 is going to end up in a bad situation. I honestly, I honestly, to be fair, that gear that 0.01% of players have isn't necessary to have at all. I honestly, uh, in fact, you'll be fine in 99.99% of the content of the game with gear you can farm in pubs. I do mainly pub trials. And when I notice there are a few low-level baby alts, I usually take a deep breath because I usually know how the trial will go. It'll either take three times as long or people will just leave after the third boss because we keep wiping. There are guilds like Ultimate Recruits, for example, that organize runs for lower characters, story mode runs, or learning mechanics. I'd advise to go that route so you have a pleasant experience. I do agree CP doesn't mean anything. I regularly see high CP players spamming bosses that have the immortal health bar instead of taking care of the detectives first. Yeah. So CP does not equal experience. CP means that you've been playing the game for a long time, but you could have been questing on 20 characters and gotten a ton of CP that way. It doesn't mean anything, right? There's people that are under CP 1000 that got, I mean, it's very common. The problem is, is some players look at that like that, but I know a lot of people that are over CP 2000 that have never done trials before, which is kind of a weird thing to think about. I honestly, I mean, it's what it is. I don't think CP is a big deal at all, but I just like it when people are CP 160 or above, because that means that you are on a character which can have a build, which can have a rotation, all of this stuff. You're not going to be doing any damage, and it's just overall, it's kind of gimping the group. It's totally different in dungeons, because dungeons are small group activities, but when a group of people get together to grind out gear like that, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to expect to be carried. Uh... Just like everything in life, you want to you want to do your share um, and do your stuff right, and not be expected to or not expect to have everything handed out. That's I don't want to be rude, but I just think that that kind of needs to be said to this guy. Anyways, what do y'all think? Do you guys agree? Do you think I'm full of crap? Let me know. Appreciate y'all watching. If you enjoyed this discussion kind of format video that we we typically do around here, I release these videos every day. It's a different discussion every time. Different things I see on the forums different things on Reddit, you know, different event guides, like all that stuff, okay? Appreciate you guys watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more stuff like this. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.